we're back. So I just got back from the World Championships in South Korea, which was an awesome experience. I had such a cool time and there was so much that happened over the four days and the rest of my trip in South Korea. And basically, I just want to go over what happened. There was a few interesting controversies which I want to talk about, as well as a bit of political scandal during some of the events. Overall, it was a very interesting competition because of all this, and it made the trip a very uh, memorable one. I've never been to South Korea before, and the culture was amazing. Basically, what I expected it to be like, not many people knowing English, which is perfectly fine. I learned a bit of the language here and there, but mostly a very easy city and comfortable to get around. Everyone was really nice. The culture was really awesome because the food was great, drinks were great, and overall, just a very safe country. Basically, I'd recommend going to South Korea, but that's not what we're talking about. I'm talking about the World Championships. So day one, I actually missed just because I had work and I didn't want to take a day off work to get there a day early because I wasn't competing in those events. Mostly FMC, Blind Clock, uh, the Big Cubes, that sort of thing. And I was perfectly fine with competing in seven events that I did, which was 2x2, 3x3, 4x4, 5x5, Pyraminx, Skube, and One Hand. Yeah, I do other events, but these are the ones I really cared about. And also, if you didn't know, in this competition, you have to pay per event. So I wasn't about to pay an extra $100 just to do some events that I didn't really need to do. So yeah, the first day, basically, I got there at like 5 o'clock, which I was finishing up. But I got to meet all the Australians, wearing a jacket, of course. And yeah, it was a really cool atmosphere already. Not a lot happened the first day, so I actually didn't miss out on much. So the second day, I got up nice and early because I had Scube in the morning, which I did, you know, okay in. Because it was my first event, it was not very good for me because first time being on the world stage, I got pretty nervous and uh, I really couldn't turn as fast as I wanted to. I was very shaky, my hands were very sweaty and, you know, the crowd was huge. Like, there was a lot of people watching and I just didn't do my best, but that's all right. I still managed to get a sub seven average, which is, you know, pretty bad for me. I averaged around four or five seconds, but I, I was happy that it wasn't a seven second average and I got a four second time in there, so that was fine. Next up was five by five, which uh, honestly I did pretty bad as well. Average of 137 and a best single of 131. My best single currently is 111, so you know, you do the maths. But then it was lunchtime. Got my first uh, proper Korean food for the competition, which was pretty cool. The thing to know about Korean food is a lot of it's not processed. A lot of it, there's not a lot of sugars and salts. It's very raw sort of food and I'll get to that in a bit. And then I got back in time through Pyraminx, which look, I really don't care about Pyraminx. I got an eight second average, the seven second time. That's fine for me. I mean, I averaged around eight, maybe seven if I'm lucky. And then it was on to four by four. And surprisingly, I actually did really well in four by four. I got the third best average I've ever done and the second best time I've ever done with a 45 second time. My PB right now is 44. So that was really good for me. I think it was just a really lucky scramble because at this point I was getting a bit more comfortable competing in these sort of situations. And then we got to watch the opening ceremony, which was really cool. Uh, there was a few Korean and dances and that sort of thing and some singing and it was really awesome and a lot of uh, announcements and that sort of thing. But then they had the flag parade and this was really interesting because there was a bit of controversy with the Taiwan flag and the Chinese flag and Russian and all that sort of stuff. So there was a bit of booing and you know people are not very happy with the outcome of this but all stuff that can be handled by the delegates and maybe future decisions who knows. And then of course I hung around for finals for 6x6, six six, Clock, Mega Minx and 7x7 seven seven, which I stuck around with because there was an Australians in these. We had Felix in the 6 and 7 by sevens. And then we had a second place. Corona Mo from Australia got second place in clock, which was really awesome to see. You can hear about all the results on everyone's respected pages. I'm sure other people have made videos about the finals results already, but it was just a really cool atmosphere. And then this was the night that all of the Australians managed to get a restaurant together, which was really cool. One of the parents managed to book a restaurant that wasn't even open that night, and they convinced the opener to actually just open the entire area just for us. There was about 60 Australians there, including parents and friends and family. And yeah, all of us in our green jackets, it was really awesome just to hang out with the guys and you know eat and drink and yeah talk about cubing and life it was great it was a really cool experience being overseas with a whole bunch of like-minded people so yeah then on to the third day uh the next morning was two by two first up which eh i did okay i was pretty close to getting a sub four average which i've done a couple of times because two by two is an event that even if i'm nervous i can still just manage to turn as fast as i can because it's such an easy cube and i don't have to think too much but i ended up getting a 3.8 at single and a 4.5 average which is okay for me I normally average around mid to high threes, which, ah, that's all right. Then after that was one-handed, which one-handed isn't really my event. I got a 32 second average, which is, you know, decent for me. But then I got a 22 second single, which I don't know how that happened. It was a really lucky scramble. And the whole time I was just thinking it's going to be a really good time because the start was, I think, a two move cross. And then I got a whole three pairs and a very easy last layer. I reckon I could have got an eight second time if I was doing some two hands and maybe in different conditions, but who knows? My last best was 25 and I got a 22 which I'm probably never going to beat because I don't really practice one-handed and I'm just not very good at it considering I'm a left-hander. Then we went out and got lunch and then when we came back
back. It was three by three time. Before all this, I did actually manage to watch the multi blind, which is really cool. Seeing a bunch of Australians competing this and just the sheer impressiveness of multi blind. I mean, it still blows my mind and I don't think I'll ever be able to do what they do. I can barely solve one cube blindfold, let alone 50 or whatever they were doing. Uh, a lot of people actually bombed out in multi blind, which is interesting, including Graham Siggins and Stanley Chappell, some of the top players in the game. Overall, it was still cool to watch and uh, yeah, then it was on to 3x3, which yeah, this really wasn't a good competition for me for 3x3. Uh, I got a 13 second average, which is a bad day for me. And my best was 12.8, which on paper is fine because it's a pretty consistent, but they weren't good solves. And my, my first time was actually 30 seconds, which looking at my old times, I think this might, okay, no, I have a 33 second time, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, that's my second worst time ever. So that just goes to show that um, it wasn't very good. And that was my first solve as well. I was very nervous, very shaky. And I knew that I was on the camera because I were live streaming this whole thing. And I knew that a bunch of people in Australia were watching, including my friends and family, people from work. I think that just freaked me out a bit. I got really shaky, messed up some algorithms, got a 30 second time, which is fine. But the rest, yeah, I got uh, 12, 14, 12, 12. So, you know, overall fine, but not my best work. And then I was done for the competition. It was really weird because we still had a whole like half a day left and the second day, which normally I would probably be in. I usually get into the second round, if not the finals for this kind of thing in Australia. But obviously on the world stage, when did I come? I came, yeah, I came 672nd. <laughs> uh, I'm happy because that's just under half, meaning that I am in the top half of the world, which is kind of cool to say. Currently playing, of course, because it was 1,400 people, so half would be 700. But yeah, look, I'm just happy I was there. Then the last day, I watched everyone compete, ate some more food, you know, drank some more drinks. It was very interesting. There was a lot of uh, cool stuff to watch, people doing blog, Cubes being sold. There was uh, that weird Mars cube thing in the corner. But before the day finished, the Nations Cup was on. And this is where a lot of political controversy happened, which was actually pretty entertaining. There was a lot of uh, nation pride, if you could call it that. The Chinese Cubers were very vocal with political beliefs about Taiwan or Chinese Taipei, as they call it. And, uh, you know, the Australians were very loud. The Americans were very loud. Every big country that had a lot of people there were very loud about their team, which was good to see. But uh, sometimes it got a bit heated with some of the... Uh, Russian competitors coming out where the Ukrainians couldn't and that sort of thing and obviously the the Chinese competitors not liking that uh, a couple of countries were supporting Taiwan with the flags and uh, one team actually had a big Taiwan flag that said let Taiwan be Taiwan which obviously the Chinese team wouldn't like or overall it was okay I don't think there was any punch-ons or anything like that which would have been pretty interesting but you know we'll see what happens in the future with all that sort of stuff and see what the WCA does about that too but yeah eventually China won against the Philippines in the finals for that so that was pretty cool we seeing Yi Heng and Bu Fang and all those guys win. And then we went out for Korean barbecue, ate some more food, had some more drinks. And then the last day was basically just watching the finals. And uh, yeah, just hanging out with the guys, meeting a few people from different countries. I met so many different people. If you met me at the competition, make sure to leave a comment because I met so many people. It was awesome meeting everyone from different countries. But yeah, the finals were crazy. Obviously Max Park won by 0.01 second average. Yi Hang came second. And uh, I don't think his mum was too happy about that. But at the same time, I'm sure she was very proud. Well, I hope she was anyway. And then Timon coming third, which was really awesome. There was a lot of good solves and it was a very intense solve right down to the very last one. Because I remember at Worlds in 2019 in Melbourne, I was watching that and we kind of already knew who won after Max's third solve or something. Because like it, it mathematically wasn't possible for him to win. But at this one, it literally came down to Yi Heng's last solve that actually made him come second if he solved a tiny bit faster. Which I think is what uh, his mum was saying in this video. Obviously I can't hear it and there's no audio, but it looks like she's saying stop the timer, you know, a little bit faster and you would have won. Yeah, basically after that, I traveled to Seoul. I stayed in Seoul a couple of days, went to the DMZ. If you haven't seen my short about that yet, it was a really cool experience. And I uh, solved a cube there, which I think I might be the first person to ever do that. If not, first person recorded doing that. Went to uh, a city called Chuncheon, which was about an hour and a half on the train. Yeah, after Chuncheon, it was time to go home. Basically went back to the airport, had to spend 13 hours in the Singapore airport coming home, uh, which was fine. It was overnight. I slept, but otherwise came back home and went straight back to work. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it was a great experience. I really had a good time. It was great meeting new people and seeing all my mates from Melbourne and other competitions in Australia uh, and just generally a positive experience. I don't know, I might even go to another continents competition at some point. But yeah, anyway, if you went, let me know because I'd love to know your experiences as well. And what do you think of the whole controversy with the world, the competitors and all that? Because it was a bit of fun, but at the same time, it might get a little bit heated in the future. Who knows? But anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.